So what I have going on here as far as my little vehicle simulator is this is our steering rack. Over here where this vice grips are, this basically would go up into the front of the vehicle and the steering wheel is attached here. So for the purpose of our video, this vice grip is the steering wheel. So now I discussed this in our last video over here when I discussed uh, drive axles and that kind of thing is the way this is set up here's a drive shaft it turns we can see out here that would be our wheel it's turning around kind of thing this end here of the drive shaft is connected over into the transmission so the transmission is turning it's spinning our wheel everything is fine this system would be just perfect for a vehicle that never had to turn but that wouldn't be a whole lot of use so that's when all of this assembly comes into place which is our steering rack here which is, has on most vehicles it's a fairly simple setup as far as what the connections into this steering rack are it's basically bolted to the underside of the vehicle the 6x6 six six I got here is just keeping it up in place so there's a couple of brackets come up underneath and they connect this to the underside, underside of the vehicle. There's going to be two connections, high and low pressure, that goes up to your power steering fluid. And that's why it's so easy to turn a vehicle that has power steering because this fluid is coming up in under pressure from our pump into the steering rack and then it's so, the, the valve system in here makes it very easy as soon as it's unbalanced it'll push as we see here out on the end of the rack here's our outer tie rod in here and even just a little bit of movement there with that vice grips as we can see I'll get my videographer just to go out here on the end here so I'm just turning the vice grips which as I said is connected to the steering wheel and there it's putting the force and moving that wheel which is turning like so and the force from the steering system here is moving this back and forth and what we're going to do here is a pretend wheel alignment so I just want to basically show you why this system is laid out as it is with the inner the outer tie rod ends and the, uh, the logic to all that might make it a little uh, solidify a little bit better as to how the system goes. So what we're going to do here, in a bit of an uncomfortable position, but my videographer is doing a fine job of getting in there and showing what we're talking about. So we're just going to say here's the inner tie rod end. There's our outer tie rod end. We want for a, for a wheel alignment, what we want, we want to be able to do is to change that distance. Now I think as I mentioned before, this is threaded so we can change the distance there and if it wasn't for the fact that we have, we're able to spin this here, you'd actually have to take this tie rod end off and spin it around and change that distance. But here's the slick part of it. You go into your mechanic, he gets, you're going to do an alignment. We're talking toe by the way here, which is the distance from there to there. That's the most, really the most critical part of an alignment. They do camber and caster, but in my opinion this is really what they the only thing they really do most of the times anyway, but that's just my idea. So, mechanic gets your measurement, discovers that your toe has to be, that, that distance has to be changed, and he wants to make it smaller. This, this, so he's going to push the front of the wheel out by doing this. So, what you got to do is release our lock nut there, which obviously is already. So, you release this. Okay. Now, that is that was keeping this outer tie rod end at that particular place. Now, we released it. Turns it back. Wants to change that distance. Now, what we do 
and hopefully we can. If you kind of keep it, a watch out here. As I spin it here, you'll see this distance change. As I put my wrench on here and actually spin the tie rod, maybe it'll show up. So what I'm trying to get at here is this: this only works because this ball joint here on the inner tie rod end can spin. So we're changing the distance out there. Now the mechanic's got his high-tech alignment machine. Hopefully you can see this being pulled in there. I can't recall which way we're going to align it, but it doesn't matter for the purposes. So we spin it, spin it. Suddenly he gets the right distance. He says, okay. We have the right amount of toe. Leaves this at that distance that we just set. Now the length has changed. Puts the locking nut up there. Holds the tie rod with one wrench, locks this into place with the other one and if you're ever doing this be very careful that you have the right side wrench on here because you do not want to strip that because then you won't be able to get a good grip for when you're locking this nut in. So anyway hopefully hopefully that'll give you the idea of how that works. So now that that's locked in person turns the steering wheel there we go, and this is locked in place and everything is tight. So hopefully that gave you a rough idea of how the steering components, the inner and the outer tie rod ends, and the tie rod itself are all connected together.